Hey, yeah. what are you doing? What are you doing? Hi. Are you in the video now? Yeah. Yeah? Mm. What's today? Eat. You're gonna eat day. It is eat day, you're right. Hey internet, welcome back. This is Sierra, and as you guys can see, I'm in my kitchen. And you guys might recognize the outfits that Little Man and I are wearing because I just filmed another intro. Today is currently Thanksgiving, and I want to film a little video for you guys to show you my tofurkey recipe and my green bean casserole recipe because those are two pretty sought after vegan recipes. Honestly, I got these from the internet and then I tweaked them a little bit. So these recipes are not my own, but I'm gonna show you guys the footage and I'll re put the recipe in the description if you guys want to give it a try either for Christmas or Thanksgiving or whatever. So for today, I'm gonna to show you guys my tofurkey footage and then I'm gonna make another video for the green bean casserole footage just cause I think that'll be a little bit easier. So anyway, let's get into the tofurkey. Hey guys, so first thing you're gonna to need to make your tofurkey is of course some kind of tofu, hence the tofurkey. Now we're gonna add all of our liquid ingredients and I like to do it this way because I feel like having liquids go straight to the bottom helps it to blend a lot better. And now we're moving on to adding all of our dry ingredients with the exception of the wheat gluten. I like to measure mine into a little ramkin because it's a little bit easier for me to drop in when I'm filming or when little man is helping me. Now it's time to blend it up. It can take a little while so be patient with yourself, scrape down the sides. I would avoid adding any extra liquid from here because if you add too much liquid, you're gonna end up kind of with like a tofurkey soup that you're gonna add your wheat gluten to and that's not gonna be as good as it could be. So just keep that in mind. When it's done, you'll know and it should look kind of like this. And now is the moment you've all been waiting for. We're gonna transfer our mixture into a mixing bowl and or a stand mixer. I like to use a stand mixer because I feel like it does a little bit better job of blending it together and kneading it, but it's your tofurkey, so do whatever you want. Then, once you have everything kind of mixed together and it looks the same, you're gonna take it out and you're gonna knead it. It's hard to explain the consistency that you're looking for for seitan, but honestly, if you have it mixed up really well and as long as it changes texture a little bit, you should be good to go. And the next step in the process is making your actual tofurkey shape. And I'm not gonna be using stuffing here, but if you wanted to put some kind of stuffing inside, this is the point at which you would do that. First thing that you wanna do is lay down some parchment paper on the counter. I like to use a dish towel for this because I can reuse it, but you could also use cheesecloth or really anything that you want. Whatever it is, it just has to be something that's strong enough to kind of hold it into place. I'm gonna be shaping this one in kind of like a standard turkey roll type shape, but I've also done like dome shapes before and it's turned out pretty much the same way. But anyways, you're going to put your tofurkey, shape it however you want, on your towel and or parchment paper, wrap it tightly, and then tie off the ends with some twine. And now we're gonna move on to my least favorite not so zero waste part, is we're gonna lay down some aluminum foil, and this is what we're gonna to use to wrap the tofurkey to protect it during steaming. I wish there was a less wasteful option for this, but as of right now, I haven't been able to find anything. If you know of something, please let me know in the comment section because I'd love to incorporate that into this recipe next time. Now we are going to steam our tofurkey. If you have an actual steamer, that would probably be best, but I don't have one of those, so this is what I use. I just literally put a pan onto the stove and add some water in the bottom, place my regular old vegetable steamer on it, and then put my tofurkey on there and put the lid on and let it steam for one hour. Now, that being said, I wouldn't just walk away and leave it for one hour. About once every 15 minutes or so, I like to open it and check the water. And if the water goes down too much, I add a little bit more because the last thing you want is to scrub burnt rubber from your steamer off the bottom of the pan. Trust me, I've been there, I've done that, it's not a good time. After it's finished steaming, you have a couple of options. You can either let it cool to room temperature and then put it in the fridge overnight, or you can move on to the next step that I'm going to show you. As the tofurkey is cooling, or even as it's steaming, you're gonna mix up whatever marinade that you want to use. For this recipe, the ratio that you wanna use is two parts orange juice, two parts soy sauce, and one part sweetener. I'm using maple syrup here, but you could probably use an agave nectar, any other liquid sweetener, and or honestly, even sugar that you like. Once you're ready to roast your tofurkey, all you have to do is take it out of the foil and the cheesecloth or parchment paper that you used and put it into whatever baking vessel or serving dish of your choice. And once you have it situated however you would like, you're gonna put a few tablespoons of your basting right on top of the tofurkey. Don't use it all because you're gonna be basting it throughout the cooking process. 
Then you're gonna cover your tofurkey with either a lid and or the aluminum foil that you use to seam it with and bake it at 350 degrees for an hour and 15 minutes. I completely forgot to do this because I was busy doing other Thanksgiving things, but I recommend opening your oven and basting your tofurkey about once every 15 minutes or so, so that way it stays nice and moist and you get a beautiful golden crusty color. Once your tofurkey is finished baking, you can take it out of the oven and place it on the serving dish of your choice. Once your tofurkey is finished, you're going to take it out of the oven and place it onto the serving tray of your choice. Let it cool for a little while and then slice it and serve it however you would like. And with that being said, that is the end of our little tofurkey tutorial. Once again, like I said in the beginning, I am going to link the original recipe that I used in the description box below. If you guys enjoyed this video and or you decide to make this at home, please tell me all about it in the comment section. Be sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.